Good morning, everyone. I'm Greg Codd from Sapphire Systems. I'm one of the SAP Business One Business Development Managers here, um, and I'm joined by my colleague Paul Martin from SAP UK, um, who is uh, specifically involved in the um, project to roll out the SAP Business One HANA platform um, and uh, to bring on board new clients and users of the solution. Today's uh, webinar is really to look at three key areas um, to, first of all, um, make a little bit of sense of what big data is and in-memory processing um, between myself and my colleague Paul, um, and then to understand a bit more about some of the challenges that presents to a business um, and what SAP are doing to help businesses address these uh, requirements. Um, through their uh, product, HANA, um, and we'll get into a little bit more detail on that um, as an introduction, and then we will have a look at some of the features and functions of the HANA solution in action. Um, and this will be running in SAP's small to medium-sized enterprise solution, SAP Business One, which is uh, the solution that Sapphire mainly focuses its uh, sales and implementation and support efforts on in the SAP suite of products. Um, so, um, big data is a, a term that is being uh, banded around a lot in uh, the media and in the um, uh, computer and, and, and software systems markets and, and forums, etc. these days. But what does it actually mean to us all? Um, well, big data, according to um, the uh, definition I was able to find on a, a well-known um, encyclopedic website is the term for a collection of data sets that are generally quite sophisticated, large, diverse, um, and, and, and can be quite difficult for organizations with their existing systems and sometimes disparate data sets to easily process in a timely fashion and make sense of the data that is there. Um, often some of the challenges around that include capturing that data, how it is then organized and stored, and how easily it can then be searched, shared, transferred, analyzed, etc. Um, and it can be, for example, in a, in a business where they will have lots of data in a finance system, maybe some stuff coming from a, a sales or CRM system, uh, maybe also um, a, a customer or, 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 or supplier facing website, um, and potentially even data coming from human resources and, and other areas as well. And quite often businesses do wish to, to kind of cross-reference all these areas um, in, in their key uh, management reports and uh, planning um, analysis reports that allow them to, uh, to, to, to make the business as successful as it can possibly be. Um, so this is something that is becoming increasingly important to businesses and more and more so in the, the small and medium-sized enterprise, which is where predominantly Sapphire's uh, business focus is and the SAP Business One solution is, 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 is focused as well. In order to gain competitive advantage and to um, also maximize the opportunities to, to grow a, a small to medium sized business, we are all capturing an awful lot more data nowadays as well, not just in the traditional um, system ways and uh, departments in a business such as financial, marketing, sales, etc., but we're gathering lots more data up about our customers, about our competitors, about our products and how they are being perceived in the markets and in the um, areas that they work in. Um, and so with the advent of social media, this has just exponentially grown as well. Um, and, and how do we capture all that data um, and make sense of it easily in a, in a cost-effective manner? Um, more and more, these, these data sets are becoming larger and larger and larger and growing arms and legs. Um, because there are so many different ways that we can now derive analysis um, from a single large set of, of related data. Um, and traditionally, the, the, the smaller separate data sets that prevailed um, w would only really reveal correlations and business trends in isolation from a, from a, a bigger picture of the business. And, and quite increasingly, what businesses and executives want is the ability to very quickly and very easily get an overview and, and, a, and a, a, very, a very good estimated position of where they are, um, rather than having to sit and, and sift through lots and lots of tables of columns and rows in, in for example, a spreadsheet type format 
clearly sometimes they may wish to want to be able to drill down into that data, but more and more people want to just be able to, to cross-reference that very quickly and very easily. Um, and the traditional relational databases in the software that we all use day in, day out, in finance systems, in CRM systems, in sales systems, purchasing systems, HR systems, for example, um, we can now struggle to make sense of this multi-layered data. Um, because of the way that these databases traditionally work, um, the uh, hard disk and the, 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 the software and the processor are constantly reading and writing back and forth to each other, um, uh, which can mean that say, things can take a bit longer to actually make sense and get an actual picture out there. Um, and in order to store and be able to, to, to actually interrogate all of this data, you can then need to invest quite a bit in hardware and extra memory and all of this sort of stuff, which of course comes at a cost. Um, and also uh, much of the, the hardware, for example, depreciates very quickly, both in value and its usefulness as well, given the, the developments that are always happening. Um, so businesses are increasingly looking at ways to minimize that risk and that um, cost, if you like. Um, and businesses across the, the software uh, strata now are, are turning towards what we call in-memory computing and in-memory processing, where um, that reading and writing process between hard disk and the, uh, the databases is increasingly being replaced by um, this emerging technology that, that, that allows the user and the system to have immediate access in a matter of a few seconds um, to make very informed decisions. Um, as as we've, we've mentioned before, the, the data is lo loaded onto the disk typically in the form of tables, cubes, columns, this sort of thing. Um, against which usually um, queries such as Microsoft SQL queries or Crystal Report queries are run. Um, if we go down the in-memory route, however, the data is actually loaded into the memory of the RAM or flash memory instead of on the hard disks. So therefore, the IT staff can spend an awful lot less time developing on data modeling and query analysis, um, cube building and table design, which can traditionally be very complicated can traditionally also be very time consuming and as a result may be quite expensive to a, to a business as well. Um, so uh, the in-memory solution, which SAP is, 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 is really leading the pack with um, and has done for the last two or three years with, with large investment into its HANA solution, um, which we're going to look at in a little while, um, are, are really, really blazing a trail here and, and, and have a, a solution that uh, is able to, to, to cover that. If um, you know, we look at some of the, the well-known industry analysts such as Gartner, who we have here on the screen, they're a, a well-known analyst of software solutions um, used in businesses. Um, they, they are increasingly seeing that this is going to become more and more important for all types of business going forward. Um, and, and clearly the diagram that we have here gives a, a bit of an example as to um, the traditional method over on the left there against the, the in-memory solution that we've just talked about before. Um, and you can see the, the, the different approach to how the data is queried, how it is modeled, um, and of course how it is then able to be much more quickly processed in the, uh, the, the, the RAM memory. Um, and, and, and why is it a good thing to be doing? Well, production costs can drop. Um, as a result, um, mash mem uh, sorry, uh, flash memory is, 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 is obviously widely available but um, it can be quite resource heavy um, and um, it's, it's just a more efficient way to approach things. Modern computers of course are advancing all the time and they do all, often have much more available disk storage um, but reading the data from the disk is an awful lot slower um, when you compare to reading the same data from RAM. Most Industry tools nowadays run on the, the, the kind of standard Microsoft SQL database, which is a very powerful tool. It's a very widely used platform. There's a lot of skills available for it. Um, but the, the problem that we find certainly with our clients using SAP Business One, for example, sometimes where they are having to, to run very large queries across lots of data sets, and a system such as SAP Business One comes with many different functional modules such as financials, sales, purchasing, human resources, customer relationship management, stock management, um, 
where a user can use these tables but can also um, create their own tables for data that they may wish to bring in and query alongside their um, traditional enterprise resource planning soft, uh, data, such as the examples I've just given. Um, however, on a SQL database, running these queries, if you are a user, you can, you can click the button to, to, to load the query, and it can some, sometimes take several minutes to return a result, um, which, which isn't very good for planning purposes. And also what that can do is lock up a lot of the rest of the available memory for other users who are not running these reports at the same time as you, but may wish to do other things in the software, such as make payments, post transactions, add records, query records in the system, but they can't do it or, or, or find it very slow to perform, which, which just causes inefficiencies in the business and can result in, in you know, losses across the, the board there. So the in-memory um, solution comes at that from a much different point of view. Um, the uh, getting into, even if your business is growing as well, uh, a SQL database can start to struggle a little bit with volumes of transactional data. Um, you can extend that, of course. However, um, the, the, the upshot of that is often that you do need to, to increase your hardware again and to add lots more memory to, to be able to, to harness that power. Um, and of course, if you're processing lots more transactions, the, uh, the circle of pain, if, if you like, is just going to continue as well with users finding their experience slowed down um, as the system struggles to sometimes cope under the, the, the technology, uh, the uh, hardware, etc., that's underpinning it, the infrastructure. Um, but in your in-memory database, all the information is initially loaded into the memory. It gets away from the need for optimizing the database, like creating indexes and aggregates and cubes and things like that. Um, and most in-memory tools use compression algorithms, which reduce the size of the in-memory data um, than what would be needed for a, for a hard disk setup and, and type of, of solution. Um, so that there is there is potentially quite a, a large cost saving here, um, and of course the competitive advantage from being able to use that data and get at it a lot quicker and a lot easier it is clear for all to see. Um, so by, by loading it all in memory, you can get away from the, the problems of slow database access for other users, performance bottlenecks. Different from caching, which is a, a quickly widely used method to, to speed up performance on reports, queries, that sort of thing, where perhaps snapshots of data are taken um, and then you can run queries and things against these snapshots instead of running it against a, a whole database. Um, the the in-memory solution is querying it against the whole database, but it's doing it in a different way. Um, so you're actually running it live into the system as the data stands right at the moment you actually run the query or data search or, or whatever. Um, and the data that's available for analysis can be you know, as large as a huge data mart or, or a small data warehouse, which is totally in, in, in memory as well. Um, and, and certainly when we get in to see the, uh, the SAP Business One HANA solution, what we'll start to see is that many hundreds of thousands, even millions of records can be queried in, in a matter of seconds in, in quite complex and sophisticated ways. Um, and theoretically, the improvement in data access is, is you know, 10,000 to, to a million times faster than from a disk. Um, now, that's, uh, that's quite a powerful um, solution for a small to medium-sized business to have. Um, but what this can help you to also do as an SME is you know, minimize the amount of fine-tuning that your IT staff needs to do, maybe even minimize the amount of IT staff you need to hire to be creating queries and to be um, uh, writing reports, queries, this sort of thing for end users. Because as we see, there are a number of tools that we will look at in the, in the software that allow users to build little queries and pivots themselves if they have a, a limited skill base as well without having to know much about programming and creating reports. So, at this point, I think we've introduced the uh, principle. Um, we've introduced what big data is and what it means to many people. There are many different meanings to that. We've introduced what in memory is um, and, and how that can benefit a business of any shape or size, but specifically a, a small or medium-sized enterprise. Um, and now I'm going to hand over to my colleague Paul, who's going to take us through some examples of the SAP Business One HANA solution.
Hi, Greg. Just waiting for the handover. Okay, Paul, you should have control now. Well, I have. You um, can just share your desktop. Yep. Can you see it? Yes. Okay. Well, hello, everyone. <clears throat> I'm Paul Martin from uh, SAP, and as Greg's already said, um, I'm specialised on the SAP HANA uh, for Business One. Um, today we're going to be talking about the, the SAP Business One version for SAP HANA, but I will mention through the presentation that we have an analytical version as well, uh, which actually works with the, the standard SQL system, but we'll mention that as, uh, as I go through the, the presentation. So if we then start the presentation, what is SAP HANA? Um, there you go. You can actually see here what it stands for. High performance, as Greg's already mentioned. Analytic, because obviously it's bringing all this data together and displaying it um, in a logical manner. And appliance is very important here, because certainly initially, um, as time goes along, it may change. But at this point, we have to have certified servers that run HANA. So at the bottom of the screen there, you see the four brands that we currently work with. We have no particular preference, but those four brands have committed to SAP and HANA by coming up with certified boxes that run this particular product. The thing to keep in mind is technology is using Linux and not Microsoft. Um, so again, that's why maybe it's a little bit different from the, from the standard. We have two versions, as mentioned. Um, today we're going to be looking at the Business One version for SAP HANA, which I sometimes call, we call B1H. But we also have an analytics version. And this version actually works with Microsoft SQL. Um, to give you an idea how it works, we'll have a schematic here. And you can see here the standard SAQ, sorry, SQL system over here. So with the B1 client running on your Microsoft, looking at your Microsoft server with SQL, and we can have this HANA server running alongside. And what it's doing is it's replicating all the data off of the SQL real time onto the HANA database. Why is, that, why is that useful? Well, why that's useful is the fact that you can now point all your analytics, all your reporting directly to the HANA database. So there's no degradation on the resource that's running your application. Um, you're taking advantage of all the the speed and the, the benefits of, of HANA. Um, and you can go beyond just analytics and reporting. You can be pushing out to web browsers. So for instance, if you have a web shop, you could be reading the data directly from the HANA database rather than into the SQL. So again, that isn't hitting your main application resource. The one I'm going to be de de demonstrating today is the, the version for SAP HANA. And as you see here, it's a little bit of a more complex schematic. We still do need Windows, so we still run the client from a, a Windows client, as you see here. So obviously, there's things like Excel, which is connecting to this data. The important aspect to see is this whole area here is a Linux server. That is the HANA server. Um, it's running the application. Um, it's running all the data layers. Um, but there is also an outside connection. So you see over here we have something called V1I integration, which is still running on Windows, which is to do with products that you may want to um, integrate with V1, but it runs outside, so you can use the actual tool. But as time goes over, more and more of the Windows application is going to move to Linux, so eventually everything will run on your Linux server. Another aspect that we've been able to take advantage of, although we've had a mobile app now for some time running on uh, um, on Apple iOS. Um, we've been able to increase its complexity. So some of the features that I'm showing you today is also available on the mobile device. I've not probably got time to show you that today, but but just be aware that a lot of that is available, and I'll mention that through the through the presentation. So what are the additional features? Number one. The HANA version is exactly the same as the SQL version. So if you've used SQL before, the SQL business one, um, all, those fun all that functionality is also available on HANA. What I've got actually listed, hi listed here are the additional features that wouldn't be with maybe within the SQL database or certainly enhanced features. So this first area here, we're actually listing 
everything that's available on the version for SAP HANA, so that's Business One running on, on HANA, and also what I call B1A, which is the analytics version, which is the SQL version that integrates with the, the HANA server as well. So we have dashboards. Now dashboards are available through SQL, but obviously they can sometimes, if they're very complex, create quite a resource demand. You're able with the HANA um, to create a lot more complex dashboards because the data, um, the fact that data is a lot quicker to interrogate, we can use more complex dashboards. We have an enterprise search, and an enterprise search is a Google-like search. Um, so yes, as you would expect in the standard B, um, SQL Business One, you can search and find a customer or a stock record. This takes it a step further where it actually looks for those items in all the transactions. And because it can deal with hundreds of thousands, millions of transactions, it can find that data quickly, where in an SQL or a Microsoft SQL it would take some time. And I will demonstrate that in a minute. I'm not going to be too long on the, on the slide. We have interactive analysis. Um, so the interactive analysis, um, it's an Excel-based tool. Um, where you can pull in a pivot table, so you can actually create your own cubes, um, which you can pull into Excel and interrogate your data in different ways. We supply out of the box with five of them, um, but you can create your own, you can add them to the standard menu, and as mentioned down here, um, import, import and deploy, you can actually um, add these systems, create as many you like, and deploy them across multiple companies. Then we move into the extra features that you're getting with um, B1H. And really what we've been able to do are things such as advanced available to promise. Available to promise is a feature that you would normally require within sales order processing so that while you're in the sales order, maybe talking to the customer, you're able to tell them, yes, you haven't got it in stock, but also when they could expect that. And even be able to interact with that, that decision where uh, maybe you can allocate it from um, future purchase orders that are coming in or production orders. And you're even able to reshed your deliveries from that screen where you can go and take some stock off of one order and move it to another. We then got to uh, a cash flow forecast, which is a very detailed cash flow forecast. Most people do this within a, an Excel spreadsheet. Um, we've been able to create a graphic but you can interact with that graphic where you can include, exclude transaction types, um, look at different um, data horizons, and, and basically be able to interact and see it beyond more standard cash flow. As it says there, it is more than a cash flow, it's a forecast. We then have an ability of creating um, simple dashboards where you don't have to be a developer to create it, and we call that pervasive analytics. So that tool will allow you to create a dashboard and then deliver it, say, through a cockpit, which you'll see in a minute, or maybe connect it to a master record or create it to a transaction, even deliver it through a portal outside the system and via the mobile device. So many ways of delivering this, and again, the, the big thing to take from that is that you don't have to be a developer to create those, those dashboards. So, First thing um, you would see when we get to the demonstration is the look and feel um, is exactly the same as the, the SQL product. It's, it's no different. Um, so there's no real retraining. So certainly, if you were going down the analytics version for people that are already using um, SQL, the training is very minimal because it's the same interface. There are just a few extra features in there that are quite impressive and um, actually demonstrate a return on the investment very quickly, but there's not lots of retraining and it. They're very easy to, to use with the standard skills that most people have. So that's really the, the thing to, to realize as you go through um, the presentation. Also, to take, in, take note, the features that um, I'm about to show are also available via the um, iPad. Um, some of them actually via the um, iPhone as well, but the main ones are, are via the iPad. So what you can see on screen at the moment is the cash flow. Now I'll demonstrate that within the, the GUI interface um, from my, my PC, but just keep in mind that that could be displayed um, by an iPad, so it's it's very mobile. The dashboards that I'll show are also able you able to tick a box and then actually deploy them through this 
um, iPad as well, and obviously things like Crystal Reports can, can be included. Uh, the extreme apps that I'm demonstrated, so things like available to promise, um, delivery rescheduling is also um, delivered through this mobile device um, if you wish it to be. So let's look at the, the actual product itself. So what you're seeing here um, is the cockpit of Business One, and as already mentioned, whether you were on SQL, whether you were on SQL and the analytics version of HANA, or whether you're on the full-blown HANA version, this screen is exactly the same. It's really what you can do from here would, would be different. So first of all, I'm going to look at the, the dashboarding you see here. So we deliver this with some standard dashboards. So the first one that you see here is uh, delivery performance. So if you were a storeman, you would maybe have this as your default dashboard. So I come in, I'm a guy called Jason Butler at the top of the screen, I'm in my company VIP underscore one, and this is my default dashboard. So this dashboard can actually be created for specific people within your organization. So this is the first thing he sees. So he can see his open documents, he can see his messages, he can see the shortcuts to the various transactions that, that, that he may actually run. More importantly, straight away it's delivered to him it, on how well his KPIs he's, he's actually running within the business. So he can see here, on time sales order, so July he was great, he had 100% hit, but over here we have a situation where we've got some delayed sales orders and some orders that hit on time, then we get into September and so on. So month by month you can see how well he's actually performing. Down here you can see actual sales orders that didn't meet their uh, maybe service level agreement, so this one's set to, to two days, but that could be set to 30 days, it could be set to zero days. So if you're into high, um, high level service level agreements, you must deliver in a certain time. It's then summarizing down here the individual sales orders that haven't met that, met that service level agreement. So for instance, if I wanted to interrogate any of those, I'm able to double click and it will take me to the document where I can then investigate maybe why it didn't meet time. As from here, uh, we could go straight on to uh, a delivery note. So other aspects that we've been able to put through the standard dashboarding as I flip up here with this little arrow is that we've done inventory counting. So again, as a storeman, I may want to evaluate my um, stock. So not necessarily from a value point of view, probably more from the actual quantities and when the last stock take was done, how accurate that was. And again, we can, just with a little toggle there, switch between uh, whether it was value or quantity counted. If I had counted it, or the last date had been counted, it would be showing me the dates here. And it would easily be showing me some high risk type items down here. Maybe they were high value and their counts hadn't gone very, very well. So it would actually bring to your attention some problem areas um, within the warehouse. As we move on, we move into other aspects. So yes, I'm still very stock orientated at the moment as it's coming up with a, an inventory status, but maybe this is more targeted to someone in the financial area of the business. So down here, um, you can see it has a various classification such as potential insufficient inventory, potential excessive inventory, higher inventory, faster moving, but you can see most of my investment is here. So you can see I've got a hell of an investment in, in higher inventory if it's faster moving. So I want to look at that in, in a different way. Well, one, I can choose different groups that I've set within the system. Um, also, I've got multiple warehouses, so I could just interrogate one warehouse. But I want to look at all my stock because obviously I have a lot of money invested in this. So by double-clicking on this bar here, it then takes me into um, another sub-area and allow me to look uh, information um, in a different level. So you can see here, I'm just moving this. This is the stock turn of this particular product or all the products. And as I go up here, you can see that's a higher value item. So when I actually uh, move to that little dot here, you notice it's telling me the stock record. So the highest amount of stock in value that I have is for that particular hard disk. I can see I've got $27 million um, dollars worth of it. Um, so it's a, it's a lot of value, and I should really from here be able to actually decide, well, am I overstocked, do I have to scrap some, 
is a system right, it's bringing to your attention straight away that there could be an issue or you've certainly got a, a lot of investment in a particular product, so maybe you should get on and sell it, maybe even do special offers, whatever. A lot of the time when you deliver this information, people think, well, that's great, but how has it come up with that value? How do I know um, the, how that value is calculated? Well, over here, if I click here, it then delivers me a screen with the transactions that create that value. And if you need to do things such as what, what if analysis, I can export that data straight into Excel. So you see, this demonstrates really what can be achieved with these dashboards. We're not saying they're the be one end all. These are the standard ones. But you may want to take them a little further. But I think this particular dashboard really demonstrates how far you can take it, even to a point where you may have individuals in your business that don't need to post transactions. They could live in this um, KPI dashboard type environment and not actually have to go into the transactions or reports at all. Taking this a little further, we've got others. I'll flip through these because I think I've demonstrated these quite uh, quite in depth. So we've got things such as payment collection. So are you collecting payment on time um, on certain orders? So you could actually see straight away we've got problem areas. Purchase quotations is an area, um, is a feature that allows you to send out multiple purchase quotations. To all the suppliers can come back to you with their offer, and then you can convert them to purchase orders. If you use that facility, this is basically telling you um, whether they're uh, overdue, so you could start chasing suppliers up, are they going to quote or not, and so on. For the sales team, we have obviously sales uh, cockpits in dashboard. So as a sales manager now, I could see this system. I can see my sales amount this year, last year. I'm able to see what opportunity win rates I have here. I can see my top five customers. And at the moment, notice Smith & Co is my top customer. It's now displaying the top five products, uh, percentage and quant uh, profitability and quantity they bought. But I'm able to interact with this. So for instance, I could double click on Earthshaker and then Earthshaker's details comes up um, on the screen. I also have the ability of toggling here between customers and changing that to sales employees. So once I've evaluated my customers, how's my sales team doing? Um, and then you can see here um, how good my sales team is, and I could click on Sophie, and Sophie only has one customer. So if we lost, uh, lost Earthshaker, then Sophie wouldn't be such a great salesman. Great KPIs to help your business uh, make business decisions delivered immediately. I mean, this database that you're seeing here that's refreshing immediately is actually based on 300,000 transactions. So um, very, very useful, but it doesn't really matter whether it was 300,000 transactions or whether it was 10 transactions. The information that is useful to you, whatever size of your business. Moving on to, to other areas, there are other dashboards here. Um, we have sales employee performance. Um, we also have a service call system as well, but uh, they're the standard dashboards. I want to show you other areas within this half hour, so I'll now sort of move on. Up here we have what's called enterprise search. So I'm now going to type in, now on the standard SQL system, if I typed micro in here, it would list every customer with micro in their name. Or if I had a product with micro in there, it would list the customers and the products. But in SQL, that's, that's the limitation. Within here, when I type micro, what it does, it interrogates the system and then delivers all the transactions. And notice that's just delivered 18,500 transactions to my screen because micro is within the name. Obviously, there's not a lot I can do with that many transactions. I need to filter this. I then have the ability of clicking this layout button, and I can now filter this down. So 7,450 invoices, I'm now interrogating the invoices. And again, there are lots of filters that you see down here. I could just look at open, just look at close, certain dates, whatever I want. And if I move over here and hang over, you notice it now displays the lines within that document. I want to find out a little bit more information about what's happened on that document and even interrogate um, some of the information in there. So if I click on find related, it then displays a screen that tells me everything about that transaction. So although I've gone in as an invoice, it's also telling me the delivery, so I can go back to that document if I wish. But I want to look at the items within this document. So notice that's a product, that's a product. And if I now click on there, 
I'm now going through the system and actually interrogating the HP 600 series and I can see everything about this stock record. I can see all the service calls, all the sales orders, all the purchase orders. If there were returns on this particular product, I would actually see the returns in here as well. So everything about that product. And I can even go into documents. So this has, say, uh, say a sales delivery and I want to look at a, another transaction and I can click on that sales delivery. It then takes me into that actual document. Or if I wanted to interrogate that further, I can click inside the box itself. And notice it's creating a footprint of all the different inquiries I'm making. And in many systems, they, they have drilled down. B1, Business One has drilled down. But this is great because it's leading you in the same screen. It's not opening window after window after window that you have to go and close. I can go back to any of these areas. I want to go back to the stage one. I just click there, and it takes me back to the stage one. So great for interrogating um, the data this search. Going beyond that and actually being in a maybe a more useful state, I could have a customer ring up on a service company. The customer rings up and says, oh, um, I've got a problem, my reference PO999, they don't, maybe they don't, or PO1234, they don't actually know your reference, and normally you have to try and find your transaction, try and check it, but if you now just type in their reference straight away, I can just type that in, and it's gone to that transaction. Remember, that's just filtered through over 300,000 transactions to actually come up. Um, with this information and straight away while they're on the phone I'm able to go to that transaction and start discussing any issues I may have or they may have. Maybe they've said that um, they haven't got that invoice and, and they haven't paid it. You could just click up here and it would email that document straight to them. So just that, that's a, a major ROI really that you can process queries to that degree and if you're getting lots there's a real quick ROI to, to this product. Other features, and, and again, for, for your own internal systems, maybe um, you, you have a buyer and you really would like to see a, a complete process um, that a transaction's been through, and if you know that process and maybe your PO is 999, you can just click here, and it then can actually show you the complete chain of transactions um, that it's been through, and again, you can drill into any of that, that information um, and actually bring that to, to screen. Um, various other aspects with enterprise search as well. Um, so that's sort of obviously quite useful, but again, I want to show you a lot, so I shall move on at, um, at this point. The next aspect I want to show you, I'm going to open up the, the standard menu um, in the system, and we have an additional feature over um, SQL called interactive analysis. Um, so if I go into here, I can now actually create uh, an Excel-based pivot table on the data within business one. So these are the five that we deliver out of the box, but you can create your own um, and add them to this menu if you wish. So I'm going to just run the, the sales revenue one, and what it's done down here is opened up um, Excel. I, I can now start actually just selecting what items I want in my report. So I want sales amount. Just to see how quick that's calculated. I might want, uh, say, customer group. So I've got customer group. Um, so now it's showing me um, all the information. And I might want to see that by year. So I can go to year, drop that in the, the column legends. And now we're seeing it by, by year. Now just, that's great. That's giving you all that information. But just think how powerful that is, how you can flex that data. I pick those particular fields. I could have that by product. As you notice down here, that there's items, projects, sales, employee, warehouses. You can analyze this data. And remember, that has delivered that information, a huge database of data, immediately to your screen. So again, very useful, really, uh, for delivering your internal KPIs into your, into your business. Right. OK, so the next item I want to uh, show, let me just close this down. Right, all the aspects that um, I've shown you so far uh, are available um, within the analytics version. So the version that you would use, that you could use with your SQL version. So if you already have Business One or Microsoft SQL, every feature that I've just shown you, you could just have the analytics version of HANA 
that would sit alongside your SQL box, replicate all the data, all those features would it would work in exactly the same way. Deployment sort of very quickly, um, certainly just a few days really to deploy this. Training as you've seen, can you do you know Google Search? Do you know how to use pivot tables? Can you click on a dashboard? Training very, very quickly, so very quickly to deploy. What I'm now going to do is move into features that are only available on the, the HANA version, the actual Business One Power by HANA. So this is V1 sitting on the HANA database itself. So I'm going to start that by actually just going through and showing you from a sales order what these features do. So if I come down to my little common functions area, I could have run this from the menu, but I'm just going to run this from common functions. I can now select my customer. This is all standard features, nothing different here. Um, the customers come in and said, oh, well, I need it delivered by the end of next week. Um, and I want a particular product, so I'll just click on the products. Um, yeah, they would like that, and they would like 25,000 of those. Okay, so I just press tab on there. Straight away, it prompts me for a, it hasn't got that in stock. Um, so it's actually telling me here, I can't offer 25,000 today. What I could do is that I can deliver 12,621 on the 20th of the 12th, and I can deliver the, the balance on the 9th of the 1st. And what that's done is interrogated the data within V1, i.e. the purchase orders, production orders, sales orders, everything. And actually, we can commit those future transactions to this particular order. If I wanted to do that, I would do confirm, and it would actually allocate these quantities um, for this particular order. I'm just going to continue because I want to demonstrate another aspect of this. And if I highlight this this line here, up here, I have another extreme app, which is also available to Promise, but it displays it in a graphical format. So what that actually does for me is actually showing me the reason it's in red. Um, we can't supply it over those dates. But if you look down this line here, you can see um, there's a blip. This would have your peaks and troughs of goods going out, goods coming in under this particular product. And if I drag that across, you, you can see here, um, when we get to that point on the 9th of the 1st, um, we could deliver that whole quantity. Where this is, is beyond what I've really just, just shown you is the fact I can change the quantity. So I'm now able to interact with the available to promise. I could look at alternative quantities. Rather than just my general warehouses, I'm able to click all warehouses, and I could look to see if I could actually supply that from another warehouse, or if I look at all warehouses, which warehouse could I actually supply it from. So again, interactive use. If you were very sort of online with a customer, if they were discussing that, if you were in telesales, a really, really useful um, aspect to the system. The next uh, extreme app, um, is really the scheduling tool. So if you got get to the situation where you have scheduled that order, um, someone rings up and says to you, oh, um, I really need those items. Is it possible you could deliver it earlier? Well, here gives me the chance of picking up the actual stock record and actually having a summary of all the orders um, that that particular product has. Um, it's this customer here, Mayor and Son, that want this 20 is delayed. Can I go and pinch that 20 from another order? What I'm able to do is pick that order up and drop it here. And I'm able to now go and pinch that quantity of 20 from another order. So I can click on an order. I could take all of it from that order, or I could take one of it from that order. You're able just to uh, move here, or I could just come in here and type the, type the quantity. So in there, I could just do, I'm just going to leave um, 69,980 in there. Oops, too many nines. So, and that way, you can then go and pinch from all different orders if you wish. I'm going to be happy with that. So I'm going to preview the effect of what I've done. So what it's done is actually showing it's going to pick that 20 up from this order. And if I confirm this, it takes the confirmed quantity off of um, the, the first order, the one with 70,000, and moves it to my quantity of 20. So I can confirm that, and it will actually uh, move the quantity over. So quite a nice rescheduling tool um, that can be used with the system. Keep in mind, um, there are aspects of that uh, available through mobile, which I'll, I'll finish off at the end just to, to let you know which ones are available through mobile as well. 
The next feature, which is, is quite a highly publicized feature, certainly you can see it through YouTube and certainly through lots of our marketing, um, is the ability of doing a, a cash flow. So within the cash flow, you're able to um, come and see your complete cash situation with all your bank accounts. And notice that's just been through and done a calculation based with all those transactions. So yes, great. So it does it month by month. Normally you're interrogating your, your cash flow to a higher degree than that. And notice up here you've got peaks and troughs um, of the, the actual uh, vision here of the, of the timeline. So if I move that down, uh, maybe I just move it to there. Um, and so what the, the actual cash flow recalculates, and it rather than showing it by month, it's now showing it by week. So very, very useful really for looking at it. You can go right down to day. Um, so you could actually look at it on one on individual transactions. Again, great that's showing it summarized, but you may want to see the detail. You can either double click on um, any of these actual graphics, um, and it'll actually show you the transaction um, that's included in there. The good thing about this particular one that we have here, it's what's called a journal voucher. A journal voucher is a, trans a journal you post, or not post, it's actually held ready for posting. So you haven't committed it yet, but it's included in the cash flow if you wish. That's a really useful feature for your what if type type situations. Obviously you want to interact with this more than that because you want to include, exclude transactions. If I open up the configuration area, you can see you have an expanse of journal, sorry, transaction types that you can include and exclude. Obviously in going out, going cash, opening balance, Expense forecast to your budget. Sales forecast is separate, where you can set forecast by salesman by month. Do I want to include include recurring transactions of so direct debit, standing orders, recurring transactions, things such as template invoices? You may charge rent every month and set it up as a template that auto charges. Blanket agreements are contracts that you've entered into, or your customers have entered in with you, where they've got call off, so they've agreed to a thousandth month for the next year. That can all be included in your cash flow. Journal map vouchers, as mentioned, so great, that's a journal I haven't even posted yet that I could delete and not post or actually go ahead and post it. Draft documents, so things such as purchase invoices, sales invoices, purchase orders, whatever, you can save as a draft document. Again, they're not committed, they're not actually posted. So for instance, if you were looking at buying stock from China, you wanted to see the back effect on your cash flow, you could create the PO, save it as a draft, come and run this cash flow. If you don't like the effect, you can go and then just delete that draft and it has no effect on the financial system. So a very useful um, feature. Also within here, you have this certainty level, so you can move this um, up and down, and you even have maintenance um, based on that actual feature. And if I drill into, into this maintenance area, you can see at each of these certainty levels um, the other transaction types. And you, could, you can even move these around. I mean, if you wanted to, to move purchase orders into certainty level two because you buy everything from head office and every purchase order always um, basically happens, you want it in your cash flow, you're able to move that to um, that certainty level. So every aspect of your business can be included in this cash flow and shown how, how it affects. The great thing about that particular screen um, is it's also delivered through the mobile device and everything I've just shown you is available through the mobile device as well within that extreme app. Um, the next feature I'd like to show you is what we call pervasive analytics and pervasive analytics um, is a feature that uh, is useful for creating dashboards and you can go and create your own dashboards not maybe to this level because this level of dashboard actually uses a product called Dashboard Designer, and um, you need an element of development skills to create those, those dashboards. But this is a really easy way um, to create your dashboard. So if I come up here, I'm now going into a, a Dashboard Designer wizard. Um, so I now, I've actually got my own little group, and I ha you just pick up a, a query that's within the system. So I've got a, a query that I've already created called Sales Turnover by Industry. And creating queries in V1 is a, is a standard feature. Um, basically, you just have a wizard, you pick the fields that you want, and then it delivers the data as you see here. So straight away, it's given me the data that I need for the turnover by industry. 
Notice also if I want to pick up um, analytic views, which are the cubes that I mentioned before. So if you've created a cube that's your own and you want this brought in as a, an, an actual dashboard, you can do that as well. So I'm going to progress now with this. Okay, so I'm just going to create this and now I want my document total here and I want my group name. And here I'm just looking at my sales basically by the types of customers that I sell to. So a very simple report. I only picked out sort of three or four fields there. But it's delivered a graphic here of the types of customers, what industries they're in. So again, a, a useful KPI. I can change those individual charts. If I don't like a, 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 a actual bar chart like that, I can see it in different ways. I'm going to have it um, on the column. So I like that particular view. You can actually set um, that it only looks at certain areas. So if you want a filter, you can drag a field into here. I won't do that for this but you could do that and actually have filters that you're only looking at certain industries or certain customers, whatever you want there. Even I'm only looking at the top 10, but obviously you could, you know, you can extend, you could extend that right over here so it can be however many groups that you, you have within the system. I don't have that many anyway, so it's not such an issue. So I'm going to save this um, pervasive analytic and you notice here, it's just come up. I'm just going to give this a, a little code on the front because you'll see in a minute I'm going to select this and if I put this little code on the front you give it any name you like it will just be higher up the list so I can sort of pick it and bring it into the, the cockpit picker. So I'm just going to save that. What I can also do is I can actually add it to other screens so I can go and add that against a business partner or a stock record. I mean it would be very useful against a stock record. Um, or I could add it even against a, a transaction, but I'm just going to finish this at this point because I want to really show you how easy it is to now pick up that um, dashboard and add it to the system. If I now click here and go to settings, um, we should see, um, there it is, there's my sales turnover by industry, I just tick that here, and it will now be included just in my um, cockpit. So if I go to my um, last report now, I've actually delivered, um, if I go to the end, maybe it should be at the end, it should not be at the start, because I put it at the start, there you go, it will now deliver my dashboard straight to that screen, which is really useful, I can see, if I was in sales, I could now see the types of industries I'm selling into, obviously it could display whatever you like, whatever type of KPI um, report or the screen you wish to show. Remember, I'm showing this as a graphic, you can actually have figures coming up there, you can convert that and it will display a table with the totals against those those industries. Okay, um, that's probably uh, the end of my presentation. I've come to just about uh, half an hour, and I'd like to hand back to uh, to Greg. Thanks, Paul. Thanks for that. That was uh, that was really good, and uh, hopefully everyone's been able to see um, a bit of an insight into the SAP HANA solution. Um, and we've seen how a lot of these uh, really powerful analytical tools and uh, processing tools can actually run in, in, in lightning quick time across uh, multiple data sets. That's about all for today. Um, we hope you found it useful and interesting. Um, you can find out more information either by telephoning us on 0207 648 2000 or um, there will be uh, contact details and some collateral distributed to everyone who was on the session. So thanks again for your time, everyone, and um, we um, hope to see you and speak to you at our next webinar. Thank you.